Diabetes is a disease that happens when your blood sugar, also called glucose, is too high. Blood sugar is your body's main source of energy, and it comes from the food you eat. Your pancreas makes a hormone called insulin that helps your cells use the sugar for energy. But sometimes your body doesn't make enough insulin or can't use it well. This causes the sugar to stay in your blood and not reach your cells. Having too much sugar in your blood can cause serious health problems over time, such as damage to your eyes, kidneys, nerves, and heart. Diabetes can also increase your risk of some types of cancer. That's why it's important to know if you have diabetes and how to manage it. Types of diabetes. There are two main types of diabetes, type 1 and type 2. Type 1 diabetes is an autoimmune disease that usually develops in childhood or adolescence. It means that your immune system attacks and destroys the cells in your pancreas that make insulin. People with type 1 diabetes need to take insulin injections or use an insulin pump every day to survive. The exact causes of type 1 diabetes are not clear until now, but researchers think it may be related to genes and environmental factors, such as viruses or toxins. Type 2 diabetes, on the other hand, is more common and usually develops in adulthood. It means that your body either does not produce enough insulin or becomes resistant to it. This can be caused by various factors, such as genetics, obesity, physical inactivity, poor diet, and aging. People with type 2 diabetes may need to take oral medications or insulin injections to control their blood glucose levels. Symptoms of diabetes Diabetes can cause many symptoms, but the most common ones include number 1. Feeling more thirsty than usual this happens because your body tries to flush out the excess sugar in your blood by making more urine. This can also make you dehydrated and cause dry mouth and skin. Number two, urinating often. You may notice that you have to go to the bathroom more often than normal, especially at night. This is also a result of your body making more urine to get rid of the extra sugar in your blood. Number three, losing weight without trying. This can happen when your body doesn't have enough insulin to take in glucose from your food. Insulin is a hormone that helps your cells use glucose for energy. When you don't have enough insulin, your body starts breaking down your muscle and fat for energy instead. This can make you lose weight, even though you are eating normally. Number 4. Feeling hungry all the time. This is another sign that your body is not getting enough energy from your food. You may feel like you need to eat more often or more than usual to satisfy your hunger. Number five, having blurry vision. High blood sugar levels can affect your eyesight by making the lenses in your eyes swell up and change shape. This can make it hard for you to focus and see clearly. Number six, having tingling or numbness in your hands or feet. This is a symptom of nerve damage caused by high blood sugar levels over time. High blood sugar can damage the nerves that carry signals from your brain to your body parts. This can make you feel pain, tingling, or numbness in different parts of your body, especially in your hands or feet. Number seven, having slow healing wounds or infections. High blood sugar can also affect your immune system and make it harder for your body to fight off infections and heal wounds. You may notice that you get sick more often or that your cuts and sores take longer to heal than usual. Diagnosis of diabetes. There are several tests that your doctor can use to diagnose diabetes. Let's go over them one by one. The first test is called the A1C test. This test measures your average blood glucose level over the past two to three months. It does this by looking at how much glucose is attached to a protein called hemoglobin in your red blood cells. The higher your blood glucose levels are, the more hemoglobin will have glucose attached to it. The A1C test gives you a percentage that reflects how much of your hemoglobin has glucose attached to it. For example, if your A1C is 6%, it means that 6% of your hemoglobin has glucose attached to it. The A1C test is a simple and convenient way to diagnose diabetes because it does not require fasting or drinking anything. However, it may not be accurate for some people, such as those who have anemia, kidney disease, or certain blood disorders. 
The A1C test can also be affected by some medications and supplements. The normal range for A1C is below 5.7%. If your A1C is 5.7% to 6.4%, you have prediabetes, which means you are at risk of developing diabetes in the future. If your A1C is 6.5% or higher, you have diabetes. The second test is called the fasting blood sugar test. This test measures your blood glucose level after you have fasted for at least eight hours. Fasting means not eating or drinking anything except water. The fasting blood sugar test is usually done in the morning before you have breakfast. It is more accurate than the A1C test for some people, such as those who have sickle cell anemia or other conditions that affect hemoglobin levels. The normal range for this test is below 100 mg per deciliter. If your fasting blood sugar is 100 to 125 mg per deciliter, you have prediabetes, and if it is 126 mg per deciliter or higher, you have diabetes. The third test is called the Oral Glucose Tolerance Test, OGTT. This test measures how your body responds to glucose after you drink a sweet liquid that contains a set amount of glucose. The OGTT is usually done in two steps. First, you fast for at least eight hours and then have your blood glucose level measured. Second, you drink the liquid and then have your blood glucose level measured again after two hours. The normal range for OGTT is below 140 mg per deciliter after two hours. If your OGTT is 140 to 100, and 99 milligrams per deciliter after two hours, you have prediabetes. If your OGTT is 200 milligrams per deciliter or higher after two hours, you probably have diabetes. These are the main tests that doctors use to diagnose diabetes. However, sometimes one test may not be enough to confirm the diagnosis and your doctor may need to repeat the test. So how is diabetes treated? Well, there is no cure for diabetes, but there are ways to manage it and prevent complications. Let's take a look at some of the common treatments for diabetes. The first and most important treatment for diabetes is lifestyle changes. This means eating a healthy diet that is low in sugar and fat and high in fiber and protein. It also means being physically active for at least 30 minutes a day, five days a week, and losing weight. These habits can help lower blood sugar levels, improve insulin sensitivity, and reduce the risk of heart disease and other complications. Sometimes lifestyle changes are not enough, and you may need to take medications to keep your blood sugar levels in a healthy range. Depending on the type and severity of diabetes, you may need to take pills or injections that help lower blood sugar levels or increase insulin production. Some examples of medications for diabetes are metformin, sulfonylureas, GLP-1 agonists, and insulin. Your doctor will prescribe the best medication for you based on your medical history and blood sugar levels. So these are the most commonly prescribed treatments for diabetes. At the end, it is no secret that diabetes can be challenging, but it doesn't have to stop you from living a full and happy life. The key is to work with your doctor and follow their advice on how to best manage your condition. Share your experiences and thoughts with us below in the comments and thanks for watching.